So, so Robert, as a, as a CTO of Best Buy, you're in this perfect position to be in the place between the manufacturers, the OEMs, and the consumers, right? So that would give you a really good perspective on the Android market, at least from the consumer standpoint. What do you see going on right now? You would think I'd be in the perfect position. You think I could just pick up the phone and tell Microsoft how, you know, what to do with their next operating system? That's why I came to Best Buy, because I started uh, 1994 as a college student. Um, Linus was still in college. Linux had come out. Mark Andreessen had just come out with Mosaic Web Browser. And a lot of my friends were leaving college to do startups in the early 90s. And I thought I'd get into web development. But to make extra money, I started making house calls fixing computers. And you see a lot of things. It's like being Einstein in the patent office, because you see how all businesses operate and how they use technology. And you know, there's nothing like if you, know, if you want to design a car, talk to a mechanic. And if you want to look at ecosystems and platforms, talk to um, you know, technical support people. So I always thought, God, if I could just get uh, Microsoft's attention uh, or get any other company's attention, uh, we could make a difference. So years later, it made perfect sense in 2002 to, uh, for GeekSquad to acquire Best Buy because it's kind of like our parts depot anyway. <laughs> and so, and I knew it was going to happen. The, the, the margins in hardware are going to kind of go away. And the value now is in connecting the boxes that these big box retailers do. But um, I... Uh, if I could make uh, Sony, uh, the Sony I remember from the late 80s, it was known for amazing design. If I could do that, I'd have done it already. Uh, the reason I'm here is because I know what's going to happen, and I, I sort of feel like Luke Skywalker. I have snuck into the Death Star of a Fortune 50 company, and I'm here to tell you all that I know what you're going to do. Uh, you know, everything's going to power, Android's going to power a lot of devices. Hopefully, there'll be also other competing ecosystems. Um, the day I heard that Google had acquired Android, I, uh, you know, most people don't know, but Best Buy is like the fifth largest maker of televisions in the country, the Insignia brand and, and the other brands that they do. And I called up the head of that division. I said, we have to go all in on Android uh, because TVs are going to have operating systems. Uh, appliances are going to have operating systems, uh, not to browse the web, but uh, to monitor to help predict before they fail and things like that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm really a tech person. I'm not really a retail person, but I know that uh, I want to increasingly see the developers have access to these companies and hopefully open them up. Uh, like how Microsoft was really smart with the Kinect system to let people hack it versus other companies that you know, were less open about those kind of things. So, Got it. So at the last Google I.O., uh, there wasn't a lot of news about Android. There wasn't a lot of substance about Android. But one thing that they did is they painted a picture about Android at home. Right? It was kind of like a big vision where we're going, uh, as in Android is going to be a controller for a lot of other devices. So your, your phone is going to control your heater, your car alarm, uh, your house security, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's sort of like the machine-to-machine -machine communication, the Internet of Things, that whole big vision, right? So that was the, the Project Tungsten that, that was sort of announced um, without a lot of substance, but just as a vision. What's your take on that? Where are we with that, and what's, is that going to happen? Yes, because the people in this room, are, I believe, are going to have a motto. It'll be coined at this conference. And the motto will be, uh, anything that can be networked will be. Anything that can be controlled. And um, you know, what I love about geeks is that with like home automation, unlike a home theater that we sell, you know, it's about five to 10,000 bucks, because you have to have the subwoofer and the speakers and, and all that stuff. Well, with home automation and controls, all you need is one light switch. You can do it in a dorm room. So we can get back to the Heath kits of the 1970s. Uh, if I were head of Radio Shack, I would like go all in on Arduino. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to beat them. I would love to see an Arduino section uh, at Best Buy. That's part of the thing I think will replace the DVD aisle. Because everybody, you know, if you, I, I mean our CEO. Well, don't clap yet, OK? I need your help, OK? Because I'm trying to teach this. See, the Best Buy executives are really cool people, and they're really curious and nice. But they're retail people, and they know that they don't know everything. And I'm trying to show them the power that they can have in the industry. They're number one. I knew they were going to beat Circuit City, and that's why I contacted them. But uh, even our CEO admits, we have like 34 different cordless phones on the shelf at Best Buy. It's like, why are we selling cordless phones anymore? Uh, and then there's DVDs. So what's going to replace these big chunks? I think there are three categories I'm super excited about. In the near term, health and fitness. With Jawbone's up uh, wristband, um, it really opens your mind that pretty much everything we sell is an accessory to your mobile device. 
uh, with maybe the exception of an appliance, but one day it'll like text you in your house when the dryer's almost done so you can switch a load. Um, the next one is gonna be home automation, absolutely. And I think the, the model for this crowd will be, um, you know, uh, why, did you, uh, why did you hook up your um, you know, pool heater alarm uh, to the garage door sensor? And the model will be, because I could. Uh, so, you know, I just heard a report yesterday, I don't know who said it, but you know, they have, Apple has a thousand engineers working on chips. A thousand Apple employees are working on chips. And once you get to flash memory, and once you get to low power um, uh, CPUs that are, are really uh, you know, conservative on power usage, it enables a whole class of devices. And I, I got the uh, Arduino um, interface from Google, uh, and I think we're all really excited. And I'm waiting, uh, you know, wh when, what's gonna be the mesh networking standard? For example, uh, we sell Control 4. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's sort of like the only consumer, sort of consumer grade home automation system. And it's good, but they're trying to control everything. Their music uh, control is not going to be as good as Sonos. Um, and, you know, I think the reason we didn't sell a lot of Google TVs is because, well, you saw the remote that they sold with it, right? Uh, there were like 300 freaking buttons on that thing. Yeah. And I think the problem is that you walk into a store and you say, hey, would you like the internet on your TV? And the, con the average consumer is like, I don't know, I haven't had that before. But if you, I think Google would sell a crap load more if you could walk into any electronic store and you see a flat screen and you could take out your own smartphone and say, how'd you like to get rid of your remote control and just control it with your phone? So, you know, that's what I hope to do is keep an eye on kind of the stuff that you're developing and hopefully introduce that to, to the manufacturers um, and get them to open up uh, to include a lot of these kind of capabilities. Hmm. So do you, do you see uh, the Google model of basically being um, an ecosystem of many, many different players, sort of a long-term advantage or disadvantage compared to Apple's vertically integrated, you know, uh, model where everything comes from one shop and everything works perfectly fine with every other component? Well, I agree with, of course I agree with everything Tim just said, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I have sympathy for Google. I mean, a lot of people are confused about them buying Motorola or Mobility because it's like, well, they make set-top boxes and that could be really cool, but wait a minute, what signal does that send to HTC and Samsung and everybody else? I think they're stuck with a tough paradox, you know? Um, even political movements, people are wondering what Occupy Wall Street, what their platform is, what do they want. And so people want to know what, what are Google's plans with Android. We want to know what's going to be the mesh networking wireless protocol for that. So how will devices talk to each other? And that's where I get back to Control 4. They have this Zigbee, which is an 802.16 standard. Why? I'll know that Zigbee is going to be a standard when I can go to a Home Depot and buy a light switch and go to Radio Shack and buy an outlet and they can talk to each other and I can download a script from somebody in this audience and automate something. And it hasn't happened yet. So I sympathize with Google. Uh, I'm actually super happy that Amazon joined the fray because, well, that's going to really test the definition of open. Uh, and this conference will probably emerge as the independent storyteller. So as all the other people kind of fight it out uh, for dominance, um, you know, in my mind, the consumer is here. Okay, we're here at the retailer in Geek Squad. We make house calls, so we're really close to the consumer. Then there's the manufacturer, and then there's the ecosystem. But it's really about the developer and the consumer now. And everybody else is, is a middleman. Got it. So, so if you think about Android at home as, as a concept, um, do you see possibly a, a sort of a catch-22 situation where the manufacturers are not building the gear because the consumers don't have a way to consume that gear, um, and consumers are not buying it because they don't have you know, the gear available. So sort of like what happened with NFC um, until Google stepped in and said, look, all the manufacturers basically have to provide the NFC chip in order to be compatible with Android going forward. And it's finally that, that muscle that they exercise is finally giving traction to near-field communication and stuff like that. So do, do you see Google potentially uh, stepping in in that sort of way and uh, using its muscle, its market power to make Android at home a reality? 
the payment wars alone are going to be really interesting. I think people are going to end up doing what Square is doing, which is, you know, if, if Google wants companies to register people in Google Places, I heard a rumor that they were going to just give small merchants uh, an NFC reader uh, to use. The problem is that the reader is not the problem or having it in the phone. It's the software to talk to whatever accounting system a small business is using. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who does, I'm the IT department for every small business in the world under 100 employees. And I can tell you, they, they have no standards if they're digital at all. That's going to yeah. be the, the problem. It, what's more likely to happen is going to take 10, 20 years. So as n new businesses, it's not about integrating what they're using. It's when they switch to a different POS system like Lightspeed, which is really popular with mobile, that'll have the integration in it. Um, but I think if I were Google, I'd just give the damn readers away. Uh, I'll get, tell you, give you a little inside info. Um, we upgraded our terminals, our credit card terminals, the Best Buy a year and a half ago, 18 months ago, to NFC. But there's actually two different NFC. There's one-way NFC and two-way. Right, yeah. And ours did not support the two-way couponing. And that's where you get the real magic of bi-directional dynamic stuff. So it's like even we were uh, doing our best. But you know, and it's going to take us a couple of years to write off that expense. So we can't go out and just buy all new terminals tomorrow. And we're probably a microcosm of what every other kind of person that wants to do this is going to do. And by then, the funny part is by the time everybody upgrades all their terminals, it'll just like be like card case on Square, but it'll just bypass it all and go through the cloud anyway. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So given your insight in the whole market and what's going on, um, we have a lot of developers in the audience. Would you be able to give any advice in terms of where you see the, 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 the next opportunities are, the next big killer apps are? And keep in mind, we have everyone from app developers developers down to platform developers down to people actually making new hardware and things like that. So what are the opportunities uh, given this sort of vision that we have going on? Uh, well, you know, what I hope happens, and the, the reason I'm still at Best Buy is, like I said, because the value is not just alone in the hardware, and it's not just in the service. It's in making all the stuff talk to each other. Now, most of the people in this room pride themselves on not being geeks about customers because you're, you know, you're do-it-yourselfers. Um, but it, by the way, if you're sick and tired of going to family gatherings and doing free tech support, that's when we become relevant to your life. Uh, <laughs> but you people are extraordinary, OK? But our, mo our model is to help ordinary people do extraordinary things with technology. And so what's going to happen is you're going to come up with amazing stuff. And then there'll be the DIY and the maker uh, conventions. In fact, I think a maker section at Best Buy also would be kind of kick ass. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the majority of the shoppers. I think our role will be to take what you create and some of you will take other things that other people in this room create and create a more uh, mass market friendly version. That's how most companies make their money. You've got the science that inspires, and then there's how you pay the rent in terms of you, know, you might have to dumb it down or, or simplify it. Uh, I think we're in an era where everybody, including Google, uh, Samsung, and everybody else, have to focus on what they're going to be great at. And uh, uh, you know, one of the roles I hope to play is just to make the introductions between the manufacturers. You know, these uh, OEMs, um, you know, in Asia aren't sure which ecosystem they're going to go with. You know, and developers can only develop for so many. So, uh, you know, the advice I have is, uh, you know, to focus. Um, you already know this. Make it as open as possible. It's. It's less the advice I have for you. It's the advice for the manufacturers. Hopefully, the next O'Reilly Android conference will bring even more sponsors. Uh, and I want the manufacturers to hear what you're talking about, because you know, they, they want to control their own ecosystem. But we know that's not going to happen. But they don't want to just give up control. But look where that got Sony trying to control everything. So uh, we'll see. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, that's the block. Really thank you. It. Thanks.